Mamma's TV, you've been growing day by day, day by day. Europe, Africa, USA, you always there, you always there. Daily news, sport, entertainment, Mamma's always there. Mamma's TV bring my cultural heritage. Mamma's TV, not just another TV station. Mamma's TV, not just another TV station. Mamma's TV, not just another TV station. Mamma's TV, not just... We're ready for day two. And today is going to be on the declaration of peace and the cessation of war, the resolution that um, the HWPL and the IWPG and the, and the youth wing are going to uh, obviously present to the United Nations for resolution. So we're going to, there's going to be a lot of themes around that. And MAMOS will be doing a live coverage of the Peace Education Program. That's later on this afternoon. So keep keep tuned in on MAMOS TV, on our website, on the internet, on our Facebook page as well. See you later, guys. We're in Romania, the capital. No, Bucharest is the capital. We're in Romania. And the capital city is Bucharest. I'm here with the CEO of Mama's Media, Mama's Media, Lamin Marong, and the amazing makeup artist. You've seen the results of this particular one, Stacy Toe. Keep following us. Thank you.
everyone for a few more minutes. Our special, our guests are experiencing some delays, so I ask for your understanding again. announce for the translation devices number one is English number two is Korean and number three is Romanian language a word of announcement to all of our guests the idol PG World Peace Conference is about to begin so please be seated So the Aula Magna Auditorium is a strictly non-smoking area, so I kindly ask for your cooperation. And the restrooms are located in the basement one and the second floor. Now the transmission will start. There will be a people joining us from all over the world. Those who are seated, please again put on your translation devices. Today, more participants have we are expecting more participants, so I ask for your understanding that you have to use one translations, translator devices for two people. Again, for the translations, we have number one, English, number two, Korean, and number three, Romanian language. So if you do have any problems with the translation devices, please raise your hand and our staff will assist you. And in the last program of the conference, we'll be having a peace pledge performance, a promise to support world peace. So the pledge that we're going to have is not be legally binding, but there is to show our resolute conviction to become a messengers of peace. Furthermore, we hope this pledge may act as a foundation for peace in Romania throughout the conference. The pledge is located in the kit prepared in your seats, so you can find the kits in your seats. And one more announcement before we start, though we don't have the people in the second and the first decks. So there will be a balloon prepared on their kits, so I kindly ask everyone, so the people, to blow the balloon. Not for the first, but for the first desk and the second desk, okay? Okay, so thank you very much. Now we're going to start the Idol PGA World Peace Conference. So hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning, okay. Thank you. I sincerely want to thank you and welcome to all of the guests here and to the entire women for Peace of Europe for attending the Idol PGA World Peace Conference. My name is Lin Kim and I'm honored for being your MC for today's conference. So the theme for today's conference is harmony, communication, and peace with the 3.7 billion women in the world. So throughout this conference, the vision of how women should communicate and create harmony will be suggested and will be a great step towards the realization of world peace. Okay, so ILPG, it's established September 2013 with a vision for 3.7 billion women around the globe to commit and love mankind with the heart of a mother who loves her children and to pass on a legacy of a world peace to our future generations. Idol PG is embarking on diverse activities to achieve peace based on Women Peace Network, in particular, Idol PG is working hard to gather support for the 10 articles and 38 clauses of the DPCW, which is the new international law that can prevent wars fundamentally. So this is the first Idol PG Women Peace Conference held in Romania, a member state of EU. So not just women in the Europe, but the entire women should unite in strength, harmony, and communication to first protect ourselves from war and conflict and protect ourselves from the society and further protect this nation and the rest of this world so that the consciousness of peace can spread eventually to achieve world peace. 
So we believe this conference will bring about the window of peace and provide an opportunity for Romania to become a leading country of peace. We hope you to enjoy the conference and that will be a meaningful time. So let us begin with the opening ceremony. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, moving on. So we'll be watching the Idol PG Peace Activity video, which shows the activities of peace held around the world. The IWPG, a place where women around the world become one for peace. The IWPG is a peace organization working to unite the 3.7 billion women in the world, headquartered in South Korea. The IWPG is a peace partner of HWPL, which has the answer for peace and is one of the wings of HWPL. Every year, the IWPG hosts and organizes events with HWPL celebrating HWPL days. Spread the answer for peace in various parts of the world, the IWPG has carried out peace activities visiting more than 100 countries in six years. The IWPG is carrying out the following initiatives with the heart of a mother to realize peace in the world. The DPCW is the answer to prosperity, harmony, and peace for humanity. The Declaration of Peace and Cessation of War, DPCW in short, is one of the peace initiatives carried out by HWPL, which is a peace partner of the IWPG. The IWPG is carrying out various campaigns to urge for the implementation of the DPCW with women around the world promoting its value as a solution to peace. In particular, the Peace Letter Campaign contains the heart of women around the world who long for peace and who support the legislation of the DPCW. In March 2019, the IWPG visited the United Nations headquarters in New York and delivered a collection of peace letters to the ambassadors from 191 countries. These letters are being sent to the ministers of foreign affairs as well as the president of those countries. We are conducting the only peace conference around the world where we discuss peaceful measures together through urgent practical activities. The IWPG is establishing partnerships by meeting with women leaders from various sectors of society and making efforts to urge for the implementation of the DPCW. Former and current heads of state, religious leaders, heads of women's organizations, and more are participating in various peace activities by becoming members of the IWPG Peace Advisory Council. IWPG Worldwide Women's Conference is the main peace gathering unique to the IWPG, where the IWPG branches and cooperative organizations from all over the world come together. The conference discusses the practical direction of peace projects, which include the advocacy and support of the 10 articles and 38 clauses of the DPCW, which is a peace declaration. First Lady from around the world are participating in IWPG's peace activities and adding strength as women leaders. We can change the world with the heart towards peace. IWPG Peace Education is a program which makes women around the world become one with peace. The program consists of peace workshops, women's peace education, and peace lecture training. Evaluated as a practical program exerting influence on not only the individual but family, society, nation, and the world. Also, influential women leaders and heads of women's organizations are taking the lead to learn about the spirit of peace from IWPG. We create an equal society. 
Every March 8th, the IWPG hosts many events for International Women's Day. Through the Light Festival to hope for world peace, we shared the desire for the improvement of women's human rights and peace with the whole world. Every year in March, the IWPG attends the Commission of the Status of Women. CSW in the United Nations. At this meeting, the IWPG wants to promote its peace work to high-ranking officials from each country and suggests ways to improve the human rights of women around the world. In South Korea, where freedom of religion is supposed to be guaranteed, a woman fell victim because her freedom of religion and human rights were not protected. The case was even reported in various countries as a human rights problem, drawing attention at an international level. The IWPG is engaged in campaigns to restore human rights for the women whose voices are not heard. We are taking the lead in the peaceful unification of the Korean Peninsula. The 10 million signature campaign to sign a peace treaty on the Korean Peninsula since November 2017 has spread rapidly throughout the Republic of Korea and around the world. The campaign was also actively conducted overseas, collecting more than 2 million signatures. WPG is continuing its peace activities for the cessation of war and the denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. To awaken the youth to the history of the Korean War and to plant hope for a peacefully united Korean Peninsula, they held a World Peace Walk at Injinga, the closest area to North Korea where the monument of the Declaration of Unification stands for the success of the Inter-Korean Summit. We are creating a world without discrimination and violence. The IWPG is spreading a culture of peace to a world that was smeared instead with a culture of violence, conflict, and war. Wherever the IWPG touches, the culture of peace is planted and peace spreads in the hearts of all who are present. Peace is something that all the people in the world want. The IWPG is working to realize a new era of peace. The IWPG leads the way for the peace of mankind by transcending race, religion, and borders. The power of women, representing half of the population, is spreading across the world with the IWPG at its center. Of 3.7 billion women in the world become one with the IWPG, peace will surely be realized. We should no longer commemorate wars, but we should commemorate peace forever. What we need right now is a firm faith, courage, and heart to take action so that the cessation of war and achievement of peace will be realized in this generation that we are living in. WPG. Thank you. So did you enjoy the video? Did you enjoy? Okay. So thank you. So we can really see that IWPG is doing so much for peace. We hope that the women gathered here will be the catalyst for the realization of peace starting in Romania and in Europe and eventually in the entire world. So next, moving on. So we have the introduction of our distinguished guests attending this conference. Let's give them a big round of applause as I introduce each of them. First, please welcome the Idol PG Honorary Chairman, Mr. Manhee Lee, the Chairman of Asia PL, a World Peace Organization and a cooperative organization of Idol PG. 
but unfortunately, he will be joining us shortly after because of prior meetings. So I ask for your understanding. But as he comes, may I ask everyone to stand and give him a big round of applause since despite his old age, he's been traveling abroad, isn't it? Right, okay, thank you. So next, please welcome the host of this event, Chairwoman of Idol PG, Ms. Hyun Suk Yim. Welcome. Next, please welcome Ms. Anna Stravanakova. She's a member of Human Rights Research Center in Asia PL International Law Peace Committee. Welcome. Next, please welcome the Vice Rector of Spiro Howard University, Professor Luminita Thistle. Welcome. Thank you. So this time, we're not able to introduce all of our guests because of our time, but I kindly ask for your understanding. So once again, a special thank you to all of our attendees. Please let us give a big round of applause to welcome each other. Thank you. Next, I have the honor of welcoming the Vice Rector of Spiro Howard University, Professor Luminita Pistol, to the stage. She's a woman educator, educating the future young leaders, is here with us today to seek extension of the awareness of peace. Please give her another big round of applause as we welcome her to the stage. smart and also powerful. I have the great honor to participate in the opening of the International Women Peace Conference, an event that resonates with our inspiration of peace and harmony in the world. Allow me to thank you to IWPG for the opportunity that you have offered us to be part of this alliance with activity aimed to noble goals, meanings, and controlling the risk of evolution through the use of knowledges, experiences, and faith in solidarity. We are glad that we have the opportunity to continue the construction of our predecessor to prepare a network of islands so that the work can become impossible. As Nikolai Titulescu stated at the end of his political career, the many peace work of mankind confers the innate vocation of mankind to peace. Contribute to a scientific reflection within the economical and financial activities in a solid anthropological and ethical foundation. The current world needs to st the support of a new thinking, of a new cultural synthesis to harmonize the multiple political tendency for the common good. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your great remarks. So with a great leadership and who has a loving heart for peace and educate the students of Romania, we are truly looking forward to the development of extending of the answers of peace and the bright future of the Romania. Once again, please give her another round of applause. Thank you. So for our next speaker, so you have to use your translations devices. We have Ms. Nayeon Jeon. She's the operation manager of Idol PG. She will come to introduce Idol PG and brief introduction speech that will take place here today. So please welcome her with a big round of applause.
Good morning, dear distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. I'm Na Hyung-jun, the operation manager of IWPG, the International Women's Peace Group. I truly appreciate all the distinguished guests and the audiences for participation and gracing this event. Today's conference is on the topic of harmony, communication, and peace with the 3.7 billion women and more than 500 women leaders and students from Romania and 10 other countries have gathered here. I'd like to introduce to you what organization IWPG is and the answer for peace that we have. IWPG is a peace organization listed in the UN Department of Global Communications and also UN ECOSOC. IWPG has been established on September of 213. There are currently 100 branches and 280 cooperative organizations in 130 countries and over 760,000 members in the world. Since 2012, we have been traveling all over the world, spreading the need for peace to every nation, and this visit to Romania is our 31st peace tour. I'm sure that the memories of this moment with you will be last forever. Uh, there are some pictures of my mother and small me. <laughs> look at the picture. Do I look the same? Cuter than now? <laughs> As you see in the picture, my mother has always taken a good care of me, held me in her arms, and she has always been on my side. When I was happy, she was at her highest joy, when I was sad, she was at her deepest sadness. Her unchanging love, sincerity, and pure heart were always inspiration to me and strength for me to live on. But I'm sure this is not just my mother, but the common hearts of all mothers. IWPG's vision is this heart of mother just like the noble and pure heart of a mother protecting her child, her children, IWPG is embracing this, uh, the global village that is painted with terrorism, violence, conflict, and war. We are working to make a world peace or the peace where our beloved children and future generations can smile happily. A single woman may be weak, however, a mother is strong. And a mother's heart is the most beautiful thing in the world, and also it is the most powerful strength. This is the driving force of IWPG. Now, I'd like to share about IWPG's main initiatives. The first initiative is supporting and promoting DPCW, the declaration of peace and secession war. To achieve real peace and sustain it requires not just hope, but a firm promise among the global families. Our cooperating organization, HWPL, heavily culture world peace, restoration of light, proclaimed the DPCW in 2016. This DPCW is the answer for peace. In order to get the DPCW legislated into a legally binding international law of peace, to bring all humanity into this framework of peace and to live in harmony and justice, IWPG is supporting this declaration and we are holding signature campaigns and various conferences. The next initiative is the women's peace education. Through education, IWPG enhances the capacity of women in the global village and educates them to become the realities of peace. If women become the realities of peace, then we can spread peace 
to our children and our husband in the family, and furthermore, to the society. This is the catalyst to achieve peace sooner and firmer. In order to educate women in all parts of the world, we are in the process of training about 120 lecturers in 40 different countries. Even at this event, there are some lecturers who have already be, been trained as lecturers of women peace education. And I ask to the participants here today for your interest and support of this education. Okay? <laughs> yes, the third initiative is Plan Peace. This is to plan a culture of peace inside a global village that has become overwhelmed with the culture of violence, conflict, and competition. Through culture and arts activities, com campaigns, and peace culture projects, which are specifically set for each country and for each region, IWPG is planting the seeds of peace into the hearts of the people of the world. And I believe these seeds will surely grow to bring the peaceful fruits. Thank you. Currently in this world, the Korean Peninsula is the only nation that is divided too. In order to bring the North and South Koreas into um, peaceful unification, IWPG is implementing the initiative for unification of the Korean Peninsula starting from the Republic of Korea, where the headquarters of IWPG is located. Moreover, IWPG is establishing various activities to fully restore the rights of women in the world. This was the introduction of IWPG's main initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone wants peace. Peace is not just a huge task that only great people can do. Peace is something we can do, starting now, starting here. Peace does not happen automatically, and it is not the work of just a single person. Because we all benefit from peace, so we have to achieve it together with our own hands. Of course, this will not be an easy task. However, it is something that somebody will have to do. And I hope that we can beat that somebody. <laughs> Just like today's topic, we, the 3.7 billion women, must harmonize and communicate together to realize peace. Just as water droplets together form a great ocean, if all 2.7 billion women that love their children and humanity become one, then a world of peace will surely be fulfilled. To all the participants here today, please become one with IWPG and please be together in this enormous wave of peace. The future generations and even history will remember us forever. As the final part of my speech, I'd like to introduce the special speakers for today's event. First, Ms. Anna Cherit-Fenokova, the member of the Human Rights Research Center in the Czech Republic, will give us her speech on the necessity of the DPCW for the prosperity of mankind. And also, as a member of the HWPL International Law Peace Committee, she devoted and helped the DPCW to be present uh, to the, this world. And she is still putting a lot of effort to develop it. When she delivers a message about what the DPCW is and what values it has to us, in a professional point of view, this must be the liveliest explanation. <laughs> Next, 
the International Women Leader, Ms. Kyung Suk Yoon, our chairwoman of IWPG, will give us a speech on the role of women in realizing the DPCW. No matter how good a law can be, if the citizens do not support it, then that law loses its power. She will deliver us a message about what women in the global village are doing and what the role of women is to support the DPCW. And the final speaker is Mr. Man Hee Lee, the chairman of HWPL. He has made all these things possible as the true advocate of peace in this era. He will give us a speech on the role of women in realizing harmony and peace. His message of peace will become a great inspiration and an everlasting fire of peace in our hearts. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. For everyone here today, having met these three people is an enormous luck of our lives. Are you ready for this? Thank you. Please welcome each of them with a big round of applause and cheers. I will conclude my speech. I eagerly hope that today as its beginning, the Women's Peace Network in Europe becomes a solidified and everlasting. Thank you very much. Thank you. So after hearing the explanation from the operation manager, we now understood that IWPG is doing diverse peace activities for the practical realization of peace. So it was time for us to expect the further speech in today's conference. So we ask for your help in creating the window of peace in Romania. Thank you. And now our Chairman Lee will be arriving very soon. So I would like everyone to stand and greet him together. Is that all right? Okay. So he's, he'll be here shortly. Okay, so as he enters the door, may we give him a warm welcome, and I'm going to give you the signal. Thank you. Are you excited to see Chairman Lee? Yes. yes. So we'll be here shortly. Are you enjoying the conference? Yes, yes we do. So I'm also expecting to Chairman to come. Okay, let's wait for him. So I think within five minutes or we'll be arriving. So the car just arrived in the university, so I think it will be here soon.
can also turn on your cameras if you want. <laughs> Chairman manually, let's give him a big round of applause. Okay, so another big round of applause to our Chairman Lee. Thank you. Next, we'll move on. We'll listen to Ms. Anna Srivanakoba, who is a member of Human Rights Research and Asia PR International Law Peace Committee. She's working with HWPL, which is a cooperating organization of IWPG, and work for the main initiative of introducing the DPCW to the UN. She will give a speech on the title of Importance of DPCW for Prosperity of Humankind. Let's welcome Ms. Anna Srebrenikova. Thank you very much uh, for this warm welcoming. Um, it's my great honor and pleasure to be here and to stand right in front of you um, defending uh, a very noble uh, cause of peace. I have to say that standing here today has become beyond my imagination because since I was small I somehow knew that there was something wrong with the world. And sometimes when I was crying in my room and my mother came and she was like, Anna, why are you crying? And I said, Mom, because of the world. And then she was like, but you are not going to bring a salvation to the world. But I told her that I can change something. So... <laughs> I stand here today it's because of my mother who is taking care of me when I was small who was preparing my breakfast who gave me clean clothes to go to school and because she didn't have a university education but she wished a lot so that I have a university education and it has appeared to me that because of human um, experience I decided to study law and I hope I have given a joy to my mother. And also my father. <laughs> Who, because of communism time, could not study. Uh, and um, had to do the worst jobs you can even imagine. And when the communism fell down in 1989 in the former Czechoslovakia, he became one of the founders of the Civic Forum, which was established by Václav Havel. And my dad told me, when it comes to life, Anna, go further than I could go. So I... <laughs> So it's my moral obligation to thank my parents that I'm here 
and I do take the responsibility to do something, not for myself, for the, but for the well-being of humankind. Because the time does not allow me to speak here for a long time, then I will start with uh, the presentation of the work that I have been chosen to be involved in together with other 21 lawyers from different countries of the world specialized in public international law. When it comes to the present situation of the world, we know that something is happening which brings us to the international order crisis. And it seems to me that we are finding ourselves on a crossing and we are looking for the right direction for the whole world. I believe there is a green light. And for me that green light are values that not divide the people of the world, but values that unite people. And when we have been asked to take the job of creating the DPCW, as the ask has been given to us by Mr. Lee, uh, we said, is there a need to create a new international law when there are existing international treaties that are actually regulating disarmament and they are regulating the promotion of peace because you have many binding international treaties that have been actually adopted by the United Nations, um, meaning by the members of the United Nations who are actually obliged to fulfill and implement these international law obligations. But we know that these international obligations are not very well implemented. That's why I think we can come to the conclusion that the problem is not in the content of public international law because it's throughout the historical process it has reflected the needs of the organization of the international order. But the problem is in implementation of the international law. With the DPCW, what we have decided to do, we have come to an agreement that actually there is a need to create some new international piece of legislation in order to remind the international community and the whole world that there are certain convictions that we call as natural convictions that are inside of each one of us as human beings who are part of this world. And we all deserve to be living in a world which is not based on division, but which is based on mutual respect on understanding and on the promotion and protection of de facto human rights. If you had the possibility to read uh, the proposal of uh, the Declaration of Peace and Cessation of War, you could recognize that there are already um, things which are regulated in the existing um, legal international norms. But we have brought something, what we call an innovative approach to the public international law because we need to take a step ahead, we need to move on and the needs of the global um, order are right now in a phase where we are actually as a whole humankind experiencing certain lessons, we are stopped and we are looking for the right direction and we need to know which direction the world is taking. So the aim and the purpose of DPCW is reflecting actually the present situation of the world. The first article of the DPCW is, re re is regulating um, the prohibition of the use of force. We know that uh, states sometimes attack each other and of course if there is an attack of one state by another state or several states attacked each other, then there is a conflict. And unfortunately, in those situations, the law star stops to function. But there are certain rules that are applicable because of humanitarian law and because of the law of war. Now, if the cooperation on a global level today would be broken, unfortunately, none of us would survive. 
and it's because of the development of different kinds of weapons, including the most dangerous weapons, which are the nuclear weapons. I will say a little bit about the intents behind uh, the declaration of peace and cessation of war. As I said, the first article is focused on the prohibition of the use of force. And we decided to repeat this, or actually to remind the international community of something that brings us to maybe consequences that sometimes are too late to solve because there are so many loss of lives or damages done on the property or on the territory. So with this article, we call for prevention, prevention of a war, prevention of armed conflict. Article two deals with the war potential. Since the beginning of 80s, the states have agreed on disarmament. That means that they have agreed to reduce the number of weapons that they produce, they create, and they probably also use it as a source of business. We therefore focused on the prohibition of the production, on assisting, or inducing the development and production of weapons. And stress the importance of creating friendly relationships among nations based on mutual understanding, based on mutual cooperation. Article 4 deals with state boundaries. With this, we stressed that the states have the obligation to create international relations on the basis of the respect of respecting the territory and respecting the political independence of each state. Then also the right to self-determination, the identity of each nation to organize um, their own matters within their domestic um, legal system or within their own state. Because sometimes governments disagree and we know that there is no really a universal judicial um, power or universal legislative power or universal executive power, we are convinced that from a legal point of view any dispute is always better to solve by agreement, not going to court. But if the dispute is so deeply in conflict, then there is a need for having a judicial independent authority which will decide about the case. And we know that there is no a universal jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice. So we try to promote the universal jurisdiction of International Court of Justice when peaceful means of settlement of disputes is not possible. But when it comes to peaceful disputes, uh, dispute settlement, we want to promote mediation, conciliation, arbitration, and other means of peaceful settlement of disputes. Because even I, as a lawyer, I tend to say it's always better to agree before you go to court. We did not exclude the right to self-defense. 
The right to self-defense means to be protected against an attack of another state, but not for the whole time. That self-defense is meant by DPCW until the Security Council decides about the solution of that attack. Article 8 deals with the freedom of religion. At the beginning of my presentation, I said that the world is finding itself on a crossing. And I believe that this green light that I was talking about also requires the respect for freedom of religion. Because freedom of religion is becoming more and more important. And I think it's necessary to understand that the freedom of religion of one should be respected by the freedom of religion of another. And because we know that sometimes individuals or groups, because of their religious convictions, try to promote something which has actually nothing to do with, uh, with the religious conviction, but it's rather a promotion of violence, then we have stressed the problem of misusing religion for justifying actually violence. This has nothing to do with faith, it has nothing to do with worship, it has nothing to do with religion. For us, the question of religion and promoting the freedom of religion means to respect the freedom of other. So that's why the essential idea behind this article is the inner freedom of each individual not to be forced to believe or to do something which does not actually come out of a free will of each individual. Article 9 repeats itself again when it comes to the protection of uh, freedom of religion, uh, but it also is clo it's connecting this question uh, with ethnicity and promoting peace. Because we know that sometimes the causes of war, they can be because of political reason, they can be because of religion, they can be because of ethnicity. And we can talk about different kinds of conflicts. So because of these reasons, we need to find a way out of these conflicts. And for us, again, the way out is through the promotion of peace. Article 10 deals with the culture of peace. Culture of peace can be defined as a system of values. Values that include promotion of understanding, tolerance, which I have already expressed, uh, mutual understanding, right to education, free media, uh, and calling for not a temporary peace, but calling for a lasting peace. Because the world has so far experienced only temporary peace, but what we really de facto are calling for is this lasting peace. I think that promotion of peace is also very closely related to the wealth of humanity. Because if you think about how much is being invested in armies, in the development of weapons, these are very high astronomic numbers of money which is being invested into actually killing people. Can you imagine how it would be more useful to invest this money into education, in promoting peaceful relationships, and into creating this world a better place? So for us, when it comes to the promotion of peace, and I took that responsibility together with my colleagues to do this work until it is reached, because I believe it's possible. And for us, the limit is only sky. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Ms. Anna, for your inspiring speech. We have felt the seriousness of women victims in the war and conflicts that's happening around the world. It was time for us to know the need of DPCW 10 articles and 30 clauses for peace in order for the women's rights guaranteed. So let's give her another round of applause for effort on Asia PL International Law Peace Committee. Thank you. Thank you once again. Now, we will watch the handwritten peace letter, which was done in the entire world to support the DPCW. You have the power to achieve peace. Is it possible? Sans doute, oui. Dans quelques films, cela peut être possible. Achieving peace is pretty impractical. World peace during my time? No. I don't think so. steps for the country and lead this country into peace. In fervent hope for peace, yours sincerely. These letters have been delivered to presidents, first ladies, foreign affairs ministers of each country, the ambassadors to the UN, and many women. These people know that the DPCW is the answer to actualize peace. They promise that they will actively help this groundbreaking work. We, the 3.7 billion women of IWPG, will put in all our efforts for the DPCW to be introduced to the UN and implemented as the greatest international law. Now you are standing before two roads, either agree with war or hold a pen for peace. Which choice will you make? I am a woman who writes peace. Achieve peace. Your handwritten letters have the power to achieve world peace. Let's become messengers of peace and create an everlasting world of peace together.
was a very inspiring video, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, I felt the peace letter just touched my heart through this letter, which shows the sincere heart of the people in this world wishing for peace. So it will move the heart of all the leaders, but not just us, but of the states, and will lead to help to do the peace activities and further to support the DPCW. Then the word of peace will come a day sooner, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, so in Romania as well, peace will be realized through the peace letter activity that contains the dearest wish for peace. Next, I would like to ask everyone to use to put on the translation devices. Okay, so number one is English, number two is in Korean, and number three is Romanian. Okay, next, we will listen to the chairwoman of Idol PG, Ms. Hyun Suk Yoon, who works without the rest to plan and implement all the peace projects of Idol PG. As one of the ways of each PL, so that the cessation of war can be achieved quickly. Let's welcome the chairwoman of Idol PG, Ms. Hyun Suk Yoon, with a big round of applause. Inlue <laughs> Somangiza, Ishtee Kwajein. 평화를 위해 함께 해주신 평화 가족 여러분 반갑습니다. Family of Peace, who has been working for peace. My name is Hyun Suk Yoon from South Korea, and I am the chairwoman of International Women's Peace. IWPG is working together with HWPL for the sole purpose of protecting our children from warfare and leaving a world of peace as a legacy to the future generations. Our peace delegation composed of HWPL's chairman Lee, IWPG and IPYG has so far traveled the world 31 times visiting many places. Wherever we went, they all wanted peace. All of us became one, transcending race, ideology, and religion. Since we've started our peace tour in 2012, the first time we visited Romania was in 2013. Including the 31st peace tour in Romania, we have paid a visit to Romania a total of six times. Thirty years after the democratization boomed in Eastern Europe, I can feel the strength that women in Europe are gathering through today's peace conference for the cessation of war. <laughs> South Korea, where I am living, has been through numerous wars since the old times. However, the Korean Peninsula had to face another conflict regardless of the will of the people. After the Second World War, no one in Korea wanted, but our peninsula was cut in half between North and South by the interest of the foreign power. We were forced to put a gun at each other, and because of this, 4 million innocent citizens in Korea died. As you have probably known of North Korea via recent news, even though people in North and South Korea have the same ethnic roots, we are not allowed to meet each other, even our own family, due to the division. We've been apart, unable to communicate. And until today, we have not yet achieved the unification, but still living in danger of the recurrence of war. We hope to live a life in a happy and secure environment. However, the society in which we live is still full of culture of war and violence. 
Even at this very moment, children who are beloved by their family are dying somewhere in the world because of war and women are deprived of their human rights in a site where there is no morality at all. Every time I see our children who are supposed to be full of vitality and confidence as a hero in the future, dying war, violence and terror, it breaks my heart. And as a parent with loving children, I could never sit idly by. Moreover, based on the fact that more than 80% of war occurs from the difference in religion, today's religion somehow turns into a cause of conflict in contradiction to its essence. Although the freedom of religion and belief is guaranteed and agreed in an international level as stated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the United Nations Charter, people still abuse religion to provoke a dispute, violence or even murder. Most of the victims in warfare are relatively powerless women and youths. Everyone, should we just sit back and stand by in this situation? We should no longer inherit a hell-like world to the next generation. It is time for us to face up to this tragic reality and to gather our hearts to solve this problem. In order to achieve peace through which one's own right can be guaranteed, to put an end to war and to bring about sustainable peace in the world, all women should be able to speak courageously about the uncomfortable truth and prevent recurrence by pointing out wrongdoings. Everyone, women have infinite potential and strength. That's how we can achieve peace in this age and restore our human rights. Women are born with nature to create, nurture and protect the lives of our children. And we have the perception and power to lead the world to the right place. The international community as well is eagerly seeking the role of voluntary women as mediators of peace. We as women and as the biggest victims in war should gather our strength together as 3.7 billion women in the world and make our voice vigorously in order to protect the pre precious lives of ours and children's. When there is a problem, there is an answer. If war is the problem, there should be an answer. IWPG has found its answer in Declaration of Peace and Cessation of War, which was proclaimed by HWPL in 2016. The DPCW is consisting of 10 articles and 38 clauses. It is designed to perfectly complete the existing international law that has actually not yet resolved a conflict-related issue. The DPCW aims at preventing a war before its breakout and bringing about permanently sustainable peace. Chairman Lee of HWPL has been dedicating his whole life to accomplish a cessation of war and world peace with the command and wisdom given by heaven. 
The PCW is the most definitive solution for restoring and pacifying the world. It is drafted by the cooperation of Chairman Lee and legal experts from Article 1 to 5. It states the prevention of war from Article 6 to 7, it refers to the role of states in seizing war. And from Article 8 to 10, not only does it mention the freedom of religion and enhancement of education and welfare, but it suggests a method that both governments and civil society can participate to maintain peace. The former and current heads of states, ministers, chief justices, UN ambassadors, and religious leaders are supporting the DPCW as one. This year, the declaration is expected to be submitted to the UN General Assembly. If power of 3.7 billion women can be added to this, I am convinced that war will be put on end and peace will reign in this era. In this regard, IWPG has been showing its support and urging the DPCW for the past three years and we are about to witness a fruitful result of our effort. In, this addition, in addition, the March 14th Peace Letter project has begun in March. Through this project, the heads of states, first ladies, ministers of foreign affairs, and UN ambassadors from 191 countries were made known about the DPCW consisting of 10 articles and 38 causes, along with the sincere, sincerely written letters that were delivered. The heads of states, first ladies, ministers of foreign affairs, ambassadors, and many women in UN have, re have replied to the letters saying they agree that the DPCW is a solution to achieve true peace and promise their active cooperation in this groundbreaking movement as achieving peace by the power of the world citizens will be an inspiration to the future generations. Likewise, those who have read the contents of the DPCW are hoping that the declaration will be implemented, implemented as international law of peace and eagerly supporting it for the realization of world peace. IWPG with 3.7 billion women will value declaration of peace and cessation of war and will continue to communicate handwritten peace letters to the head of states and working institutions for their support and urge. And until the very day the DPCW is submitted to the UN and implemented as peace international law, we will not stop, but do all our best. There are women leaders in Romania and Europe and young people. With your sincere hearts, please call upon the heads of state in every country to agree the DPCW, the HWPL's chairman, Lee, proposed as the absolute answer to peace that the declaration will be implemented as an enforceable document. And please become one, of, one with IWPG as 3.7 billion women. Then, we are, then we, are, we are able to protect our children from war and disputes and live peace as an inheritance to the generations to come. All of you who have witnessed the step of peace are the witness of world peace and the messengers of peace. 
Implementing international law, which can be a new standard for the cessation of war, is what all humanity long for. When it is completely completed, all of you who are gathered here today and I will be written as the most respected leaders in the entire mankind. Let us all unite as one, cease wars, and create a world of eternal peace. We are one. Thank you very much for listening. So in order for the DPCW, the answer for peace, to be tabled in the UN a day sooner, we need to gather the voice of all the women as well. And let us give her again a round of applause for her devotion towards cessation of war in this world. Thank you. Next, again, may I ask everyone to use your translation devices. So we will welcome the chairman of HWPL, Mr. Man He Lee, who formed the best judiciary system and declared the articles and 38 clauses of the PCW. He has established the framework for women to work together in peace and to end the war. He will give a speech on the topic of role as women for realization of harmony and peace. Let us welcome with a big round of applause this year's most active and most appreciated peace messenger, Mr. Man He Lee, Chairman of HLPL. members of peace and all women, greetings. I'm Chairman Mani Lee of HWPL. Dear everyone, I know that we gather together here for peace. And what are we hoping for? We are here gathered together for peace together. And why is it necessary women's efforts to in order to achieve peace? I'd like to talk about that today. Regardless of youth and woman, they're the essential members to achieve world peace. And before speaking of that, we have to know the the reasons for the establishment of the United Nations and what are their roles. In, this, in this busy days in this world, we need to know the fundamental reasons why the UN was created. It was established to achieve peace. It was established to achieve the world without wars and conflicts. That's the fundamental purpose of the establishment of the United Nations. And how long it has been since the creation of the United Nations? Has the peace came to this earth and this world? No, not yet. Although the United Nations is spending a lot of budgets and money for peace, peace has not been, it's not been achieved yet. Although the fundamental purpose of creation of the United Nations is to achieve peace in this world. However, and unfortunately, the UN has not achieved the world peace yet. Because with the existing international legal framework, it allows room for allowing some of those conflicts and wars. Therefore, it has its own limitations in achieving peace. In that sense, I urgently feel the necessity of introducing a new legally binding international law, a uh, peace law, so that we can create and prevent the fundamental causes that creates wars and conflicts. 
In the United Nations Security Council, there are five permanent members. And when, when a war breaks out, did those five members stop the breakout of war? No. Those countries were so into selling logistics material during war and only cared about making profits at the time. In that sense, I don't think it is possible to achieve complete peace on this earth. In addition, when we look at the progress of the weapons of mass destruction at this moment in this world, it has been so progress so that it can, it can literally destroy the earth. And what will happen if those weapons get exploded and a war breaks out in this world? Instead of just saying that we love our children, our nation, or our country, regardless of who they are, they all need to work for peace that in with, the, with a new international peace law that can guarantee world peace and which eliminates the possibility of creating wars around the world. Regardless of who you are, and including me, we are the same human beings. We have the same ears, eyes, and legs, and hands. So we should stop superficially saying that we love children and we love our country and we don't want war. But we need to take an action to make peace in this world. There has been so many people who have been working for peace in the past. However, nothing much has been changed with regard to world peace. They've been just repeating for peace, however, no true realization of peace has, has appeared to us. In understanding of such situations, I dedicated myself to achieve a true world peace. So I have figured out with a clear answer for peace. And with that clear answer, I've been going around the world numerous times. How did I, what, what did I do at the time? I had this mindset that I need to work for peace beyond boundaries, state boundaries, ethnic groups, or religious groups. The world will not be changed if there's big countries to sell this logistics material in during a breakout of war. And what are the answers for peace that I have? Two wing organizations, the youth group and the women's group, are the answers. For example, let us think about this issue. If a war breaks out, who are the ones who, were, who get to be sacrificed on the front lines of the battlefield? The youth are the ones firstly sacrificed due to the agonies of war. And as a war veteran in the Korean War, I've witnessed so cruel reality of the Korean War at the front lines of the battlefields. People were suffering from pains at the time, and I was able to see the cruelty of the wars. And because of that, in order to achieve peace in this world, I have hosted the World Peace Summit uh, back in South Korea. In addition, in commemoration of such um, initiatives, I have hosted a, an event, peace event, back in UN Cemetery, uh, located in Busan, South Korea. And I've urged the necessity for peace at the time. We are all the same living creatures. We are created as living creatures. We should protect our lives and our children's lives and the youth's lives. Did government or other authorities compensate those lives who were sacrificed due to wars? No. Those lives are worth more than even some money or some uh, goods. We need to be aware of the 
the value, the true value of lives. It's very unfortunate that the youth who participated in all of those wars weren't able to enjoy the prime times of their lives. However, they had to be sacrificed and no one was compensated for their lives. As the youth, I'd like to urge once again that we need to protect ourselves from the battlefields and wars. In addition, as parents, as women, we have a responsibility of protecting our children and nurturing our children. And that could be our hope and our uh, blessings for ourselves. Do we need to... So as parents who are nurturing our children, we should not give up our children to the battles or wars. We should not let our children to be sacrificed during wars and due to conflicts. We have about 3.7 billion women around the world. And if you add the numbers of all the youth around the world, it will be the number itself will be enormous. We should not stand still, and we need to take an action. We should not stand still. We cannot withstand the cruelty of being people sacrificed due to wars. We are all the same human beings. We should no longer wait for taking an action. We need to take an action right now for peace. <laughs> We need to remember the cruelty of wars. Do you know what will happen if a nuclear weapon explodes? No lives could be guaranteed if that happens in this world. And the impact will last for more than hundred more than decades. And it is very clear that we don't need a war. There's no need for a war. I'd like to urge you, all of you, once again, that we need to cease all wars around the world and let us leave world of peace as a legacy for our future generations. I'd like to urge with that once again. Dear everyone, please listen to me and open your hearts. Money or power will not last forever. The thing that will last forever as a legacy for our future, our future generations is peace. It's more valuable and it's the most needed value or virtue that we need to give to our future generations. It is peace. Isn't it true? Dear everyone, distinguished guests, it is sin to have wars and conflicts. The Creator, God, went away due to the sins of human beings. As soon as sin is resolved, I believe that God will be with us once again. I believe that God should come to this world and rule over the nations. And the place where God lives is the kingdom of heaven. We need to stop killing people and need to resolve the issue of sins in the future. In that regard, we needed the women's group and the youth group. And as our wing organizations of HWPL have been urging the necessity for peace. In addition, I've been, I've been urging also that it is now the time that we need to change the existing international law, which has a lot of vulnerabilities. And we have a woman member for of the HWP International Law Peace Committee. Did you see her? She's standing behind, sitting behind. Listen to me. Please open your hearts. 
in all around the world there is a very wise woman in this world who is striving for peace and introducing a new international law. Please remember her now. Now is the time that we need to strive for cessation of wars and world peace. And we have a clear answer. It is the DPCW, 10 articles and 38 classes. With those 10 articles and 38 classes, I'm certain that we can eliminate the causes for wars and conflicts. And in that way, we can get step closer to the cessation of wars and world peace. With the 10 articles and 38 classes, we can stop wars. We can do it. I'd like to, because of those initiatives, I've been traveling, I've been circling around the world various times. This is my 31st World Peace Tour by, by circling around the world, by going around the world. I've been urging the necessity for peace and a new legally binding international law, legal instrument. And this was created uh, since the World Peace Summit back in South Korea and also as soon as it gets introduced to the United Nations General Assembly there will be a voting process and as soon as we get the two-thirds of the uh, votes from the member states of the United Nations then it will be passed and introduced as a draft resolution of the United Nations and in that way we will be able to achieve peace and because of that I've been Traveling around, I've been going around the world and urging for the necessity of the 10 articles and the 38 classes of the DPCW. Now we have the answer for peace. We need to take an action and we need to implement the DPCW. If current heads of states opposed to such initiatives, then those presidents will be remembered, unfortunately, as the ones who oppose to peace and who do not follow the wills of people. In addition, I believe that there's no one who loves war, but everyone wants to have peace in the world as everyone wants to have peace in this world as a politician as the one who serves for the citizens of country current heads of states need to support and sign and agree on the DPCW by gathering our hearts together regardless of whether you're youth or woman, we need to collaborate with each other and let us work together for peace and let us work for the world without any conflicts or wars. The one who gave me the guidance with the answer for peace, the God, told me that we can do it and we can accomplish those goals. So rather than just speaking the words, I've been taking actions. I think it's better to take an action at this moment, right now. And what did I have done for that? At first, I traveled, I went to Africa, traveling from South Korea to Ethiopia and out there I made a visit or visited the president of Ethiopia and he is a very old man and I've urged the necessity of the of the eliminating word conflicts and wars and at the time with the president of Ethiopia we pledged to work for peace 
and he actually expressed his support for the world peace, and he said, okay. And secondly, I visited and met the president of South Africa, and since he was a little bit younger than me, um, we started to call ourselves as brothers, each other, older brother and younger brother, and I also get the support from him to work for peace together. And thirdly, where did I go? I went to uh, Romania and met the president, Emily Constantinescu, and we have also pledged to each other to work for peace. In addition, after consultations with him, I got the motivations and I got to host the World Peace Summit in South Korea. That's how the work of peace had begun. I've not finished the, all the events that I went through. And those current and former heads of states that I met were appointed as advisory council member for the HWPL, giving us advices for implementing DPCW. And at the same time, also I met current uh, presidents of universities and politicians and leaders from different organizations and designated them as also council advisory council members. In addition, I also met uh, reporters and media staffs and designated them as publicity ambassadors for HWPL. And these are all work for peace. You can witness all of these works. By doing so, I've been working hard for world peace. A couple of months ago, I visited Sydney, Australia, and at the time, representatives from South Pacific Islands were in attendance, and I urged the necessity for the DPCW, and all of those representatives agreed in support of the DPCW. In addition, when I visited Pan-African Parliament, which is a legislative body of the African Union, consisting of 55 countries, those parliament members also expressed their support for the DPCW. Therefore, it would be insane if the current heads of state opposed to the DPCW. There is no president without country, and there is no president without citizens. I believe that those for the existence of a country it needs citizens, and because of that, president can exist too. So therefore, I believe that if citizens of a certain country want to achieve peace, and if that's their wishes, then presidents will not be able to oppose such initiatives. And because of those reasons, I'm confident that world peace is achievable and realizable. So therefore, we need to think this work for peace as our own task and we need to, to take an action all together. The women's group, IWPG, will work together with women's organizations around the world and will be remembered forever and ever in the history of the world as the organization that pursues and works for peace. In addition, starting from today, please participate and be together and be one with the women's group and please work for peace. I would like to urge once again, thank you so much.
떠나셔야 하기 때문에 함께 다시 한번 I see great team. I still leave the door. Thank you. Okay. Thank you once again, Mr. Chairman Lee. Now we all be seated. So moving on, next, we would like to introduce the declaration of peace and cessation of war through an introductory video. So this time, let's watch the video. weapons to benefit humanity. Article 3. Develop friendly relations and prohibit acts of aggression. international disputes through peaceful means. Article 7. Acknowledge the right to self-defense. declaration do hereby urge that all efforts be made so that this declaration is adopted and respected by all states. Okay. I truly expect that all of our villages to be united in peace with the PCW 10 articles and 38 clauses. To this end, let women be the principal leaders for peace and gather the strength in supporting and urging the DPCW. At this time, we'll have a sign the International Women's Peace Pledge. 그런 우리의 마음을 담아 자리에 모인 분들이 다 함께 세계 평화 실현을 위해 서약을 하는 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. This 
미국 3개주를 시작하여 유럽 5개국과 아프리카 2개국, 필리핀 호주를 비롯한 오세아니아, 캄보디아에서 약 10만 명의 여성들이 서약하였고 이렇게 전 세계 37억 여성은 화합하고 소통하며 평화를 이루어가고 있는 증거가 되고 있습니다. 이곳에 보인 여러분들도 이 서약을 통해 평화의 사자가 되어주시고 지구촌 전쟁 종식 세계 평화 실현에 앞장서 주시기 바랍니다. 다시 한번 말씀드립니다. 이 서약서를 쓰는 것은 따로 법적 효력은 없으나 우리 모두가 마음으로, 하, 마음으로 모여서 이 컨퍼런스, 컨퍼런스를 통해 루마니아에도 평화의 바람이 불기를 염원하며 쓰는 것입니다. 법적 효력은 따로 없지만 이 서약서는 당신과 IWPG와 평화를 위한 같은 마음으로 일하겠다는 약속입니다. 루마니아는 평화로운 나라이지만 만약 개개인의 내부의 평화가 존재하지 않는다면 세계 또한 세계 평화 또한 이루어지지 못할 것입니다. 그러니 우리 모두 우리 자신으로부터 시작하는 평화를 실현하기 위해 함께 합시다. 네. 저희가 자리에 놓아드린 서약서를 꺼내서 서명해 주시기 바랍니다. So in your... 네, 여러분이 착석하신 자리에는 클리어 파일이 놓여져 있습니다. 계속 그 안에 들어있는 서약서를 끄내, 꺼내서 서명해 주시면 됩니다. 혹여 받지 못하신 분들이 있다면 손을 들어주시면 저희 스태프들이 도와들, 도와드리겠습니다. 네, 이제 함께 서약하는 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. 서약하셨습니까? 네, 서약서에 동참해 주신 여러분. We hope that you'll work together for the settlement of a culture of peace and for the guarantee of women's human rights in Romania. For that, we will take a commemorative photo. So we would like to ask our honorable guests to come in the scenes 
in the seat in the front to take a photo all together. pledge if you're done please hold the pledge don't pass it yet please just hold your pledge can everyone just hold the pledge yeah we need to take a commemorative photo so I am asking once again please hold okay please look at the camera don't cover your beautiful faces okay so on the chest level May everyone look at the camera? Okay, can you hold the pledge? Okay, please don't cover your beautiful faces. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Once again, on the count of three, one, Okay, so next we are doing we are one. So we're gonna raise our index finger on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so this will end the commemorative photo. Thank you for your participation. And thank you for the honorable guests. You may also go back to your seats on the stage. Please pass to the direction of the staff near you the pledge. Please collect it quickly. Next. Okay, so we'll be having the Peace Ambassador Inauguration Ceremony. So idol peace amb ambassadors are those who promote our organization and the initiatives and spread the culture of peace to realize the peace. As I pronounce the name, may I ask to come up to the stage? So first, Ms. Carmen Nemes, the president of Anais Association, may I ask you to come on the stage? Okay. <laughs> Ms. Alexandra Apostle, the re director and chief executive of Hyperion University. Next, Ms. Nene Bojang, the Executive Director of the Inter-African Committee in Norway. And lastly, Ms. Galnia Polyakova, the Vice Chairwoman of Women's Union of Ukraine. Okay, so we have the four peace ambassadors. So now the peace... So now the Peace Ambassador Inauguration Ceremony will start. So we'd we'll like to call first with Miss Carmen Nemes. So the content is as follows. In recognition, of our, in recognition of our voluntary work and endeavor in peace to achieve a peaceful world as a perpetual legacy for the future generation, we are hereby appointed as the Peace Ambassador to the Idol PG April 3, 2019. Next, we have Miss Alexandria Apostle. The content below is the same. Congratulations. Next. Congratulations. Next, we have Miss Nene Bujang. The content here below is the same. Congratulations. Next, we have Miss Galina Polyakova. The content below is the same. Congratulations. We truly congratulate all. Let's have a photo with a certificate. Please look at the camera. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Okay, thank you so much and congratulations on your appointment. We ask for you for the continuous active work on publicizing the peace work of Idol PC. Again? 
Thank you. Okay, so please send them another round of applause. As the highlight, thank you. So as the highlight of today's event, we would like to have MOA, MOU signing ceremony between the idol PG and women leaders of organizations and schools. The organizations and school that has signed MOA MOU is Casa Ayona, Associada Mame Pentru Mame, White Cross Foundation, A Nice Association, Spiro Harvard University, the Hyper Union University. We appreciate your attendance today. May we call again the leaders to come up on the stage? So it's a very meaningful ceremony to have the signing of MOA, MOU, since it's the very first time to happen here in Romania. So once again, thank you all the leaders of the organization. Now, we will be starting. So may I read the content of the certificate of MOU. The International Women's Peace Group and Casa Iona agreed to cooperate with each other for the realization of world peace and prosperity of mankind and to continue to operate and develop idol PG peace initiatives. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Asociada Mame Pantry Mame. The content below is same. Congratulations. Next, we have White Cross Foundation. The content below is same. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Lastly, we have Anna's Association. The content here is the same. So, okay, so let's have a commemorative photo. Please. Okay, let's have another commemorative photo. Please look at the camera in front. Please open. Okay, so please look at the camera on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you so much. So, this concludes the signing of MOA and MOU. Thank you once again. So all the leaders who have signed the MOA and the MOU from now on, so we hope that all the leaders will work for the promotion of women's human rights and the spreading of a culture of peace. Once again, we thank you for your support and cooperation. Again, please give them another round of applause. Moving on, next there will be a ceremony for the appointment of the manager of regional branches of IWPG who are working according to the founding principles of the IWPG. As a female leaders with devotion to world peace and motherly hearts, may we call all the managers to come up on the stage. So may we call on Ms. Leocadia Gerasimento. I may call on Mr. Benetti, Filipotea. So the content is as below. So under the dedication to the realized world peace and practice the founding principles of Idol PG, which aims to protect children from suffering of war and have a legacy of peace to the future generations with motherly heart. So hereby appointed to the position of manager of Brashobo, Romania of branch of Idol PG. Next, 
We have Ms. Leocadia Gerasimento, who is the manager of Kiev, Ukraine. The content here below is the same. Congratulations. So, can we have another photo? Okay, please look at the camera. On the count of three, one, two, three. So thank you so much. So this concludes the appointment of the manager of regional branches of Idol PG. So thank you once again. Thank you, Bill, that we, you will work hard for the development of peace in each region. Again, please give them another round of applause. So next, there are people who came here today to lighten up this place. There will be a performance by Star of Europe who came from Czech Republic. So they have prepared beautiful harmonies for the conference team, Harmony, Communication, and Peace with a 3.7 billion women in the world. The song entitled, A Whole New World, and we're all in this together. Please welcome them with a big round of applause. Okay, they're coming.
every time together together Thank you very much for the wonderful performance. I believe Romania will be colored by peace in no time. Again, let's give them another round of applause for the beautiful performance who came all the way from Czech Republic. Now we have to end our conference. So we're going to have a commemorative photo all together. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so may we ask? We will ask our honorable guest to, to go down the stairs to have a commemorative photo all together. Please look at the camera. So until the day the woman of 3.7 billion people will become one under the name of Idol PG. Let's all look at the camera with a big smile on your face. On the count of three. One, two, three. Again, this time with the index finger, we're gonna shout, we are one, on the count of three. One, two, three. We are one. Okay, thank you so much for participation. Thank you very much for all the participants, and especially for the staff who offered the place and supported the event. This concludes our conference for today. Please have a safe trip back. Once again, we thank you, everyone. There.